You're listening to the Things You Don't Hear in Church podcast, a show where your hosts, Darian and Ethan, discuss the controversial topics often avoided by the church. They also discuss culture, society, and everyday goofs. And now, Darian and Ethan. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Things You Don't Hear in Church podcast. My name's Ethan, and joining me for a second time, again, not Derry, is my wonderful girlfriend, wonderful, wonderful girlfriend, Laura Rose, whoop, whoop. and if you missed last week's episode, Derry is on a little retreat with his dad on a road trip right now. He's in Arkansas camping for nine days with some relatives, and Laura's kind of kind of filling in miscellaneous times for us and helping me with the show, and yeah, we got a good one for you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, we got a good one for you today. That's really exciting, but do you want to say anything before we start the show? You want to... Oh, that was the moment I was supposed to say thanks for having me. That's okay. Thanks for having me. That's it. Anything on your mind? Anything well, eventful happening? Um, we're getting ready to like start a lot more of our work, so that's exciting. We're having like a kind of group staff conference this week. That mm-hmm. should be exciting. Kind of just gathering with everybody that works where we work. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Staff conference coming up. It's a good time. It's good we're time. actually missing one of the optional sessions right now to record this um but you're welcome we're here (laughs) we're here every week um this week uh we want to talk to you guys about something that's always a big conversation in christianity and politics and ethics and morals Mm -hmm. and recently has been making waves uh the uh, the state of texas has recently as you've heard in the news passed this new abortion ban where they're limiting who can get abortions if you if like women don't get an abortion before six weeks and they can't get it at all, basically. Um, and the problem with that that people are having is saying, well, we don't, the women don't really know if they're pregnant, <laughs> excuse me, if they're pregnant until about six weeks. So by the time they find out, it's too late and then they're mm. kind of upset about it. Um, and that has a whole bunch of people are saying a whole bunch of things about that where it's like, uh, are you saying this? And there's a bunch of myths being out, like out there, like, um, a bunch of stuff about like oh this is a war on women not about human rights this is this this is this but there's a lot of like gray not gray areas but things that are being said about the ban itself that aren't necessarily true but we're not gonna be talking about that because that's like specifically just political stuff we're gonna be talking about the morals or the and the philosophy and ethics around abortion today mm-hmm. uh but this abortion ban got us talking about it and it's been making waves so we just wanted to share yeah. some thoughts regarding that and bringing you some christian perspective with that if you guys are just joining us or maybe this is the first video you're watching that were the things you don't hear in church podcast and we talk about the gray areas of the christian faith answering tough questions to your bible answers or life answers anything that you know might be shaky we talk about like drugs psychedelics those are the same thing mm-hmm. um sleep paralysis <laughs> like sexuality all that type of stuff we want to answer your questions with some biblical understanding being compassionate and empathetic while also standing firm for biblical truth Mm, yeah um but yeah anything you want to you want to like yeah i think that um before we even have this like discussion something that i want to like be clear on is i don't think that uh it's fuzzy like what we should believe but i do think that it is kind of fuzzy and hard to like understand like all that it affects and I don't know we just want to be gracious in this conversation and also encourage Christians and everybody but encourage Christians to be gracious in the way they communicate although we are called to stand for truth so I don't think we should shy away from what we believe the truth to be but uh yeah I mean I think this topic like carries a lot of I don't know, maybe shame as well, like, for women. And then also, like, there's a whole, like, women-man, like, relation there of, like, men shouldn't be able to tell women what to do with their bodies. And, of course, like, we have grown up in a country, or sorry, we have a country that obviously has a history of, like, um, oh, what's it called? When you, like, hate on a woman. Uh, misogyny? Yeah, like, I know that that, like, is something that, like, happens in our country, but yeah, so I don't know. I think it's just it's just gotten touchy, like especially this topic, and like people layering like, oh, this is just like more misogyny, which I don't actually think it is at all. Yeah, uh, definitely yeah. not. It's about yeah. human life. Anyways, so just to say that, and and an interesting fact that I thought should be shared is that one in four women have an abortion in their lifetime, and so 
it's extremely likely and probable that people who listen to this have had an abortion. And so... Or know someone who has. Yeah, or know someone who has. Like, know someone very close to them. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we do just want to speak with grace. Yeah, so we want to be, like, empathetic and kind and understand um, maybe the reasons why or the pressures around what happens. Um, And we want to, like, be here as a voice to say, like, hey, if you haven't... If you had had an abortion... There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. You know, Jesus' mm-hmm. sacrifice paid for all our sins. And so you can live freely out of that and learn how to forgive yourself and receive the forgiveness that Jesus offers you. Mm-hmm. You know, we are not the sum of our mistakes. We are seen as the righteousness of Jesus as um, as a Christian. So mm-hmm. if you're not a Christian, then highly encourage you to become one. You know, it's Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. None come to the Father except through him. So let's get after it. Before we get started more, I'm just going to turn your mic around, I think. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think that might be better. Oh. That's the front, I think. Okay. Start talking real quick so we can see. Uh, we are talking about abortion. and Yeah, uh, way better. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. Anyways, the idea that you're getting at is like men versus women. That's so funny to me because a, a bunch of people always say men can't tell women what to do with their bodies. Okay, but this is this is human life, and that's the that's the case that we're mm-hmm. gonna make today, well, and we're gonna really... talk about that irony later. Yeah, know. sorry. Oh, you're fine. Well, also, <laughs> men can't tell women what to do with their bodies. It's not their body, so that's just one yeah. blanket statement that I would say as well. Um, obviously, a pregnancy is a very like, uh, like that really affects a woman's body. No one is arguing that, um, but. It's ultimately a baby's body. Yeah, definitely. All right. So um, where do you want to go? What do you want to start off with this conversation about abortion? How do you want to segue <laughs> into everything? Um, do you want to start with objections and like common objections that people make? Or do you want to talk about the how it is a human life and set up our case mm. for that? Yeah, let's talk about how, how it's a human life. Because I think after that, I think a lot more people can get on board with the fact that a, that a uh, that it is a human life but most people it seems like are like yeah but i should be able to choose because what about the cases of insert the objections yeah, of like so the we'll cases of rape and those things so i think though we need like what is most important is for people to see the truth of what the fetus or the baby or is that, that life goat, is like that, yeah. yeah like people need to realize what that is and and value that and like that should be the presupposition that then they, we build our like foundation on rather than okay well like there's some cases of rape so then that's our presupposition it's like those babies shouldn't like those mothers shouldn't have to it's just twisted but we'll get there yeah (laughs) okay so just so you guys know like scientifically a fetus is a human being you know as soon as the sperm fertilizes the egg and they start mingling and creating and reproducing it's called a zygote you know a zygote or a zygote is a stage in birth it's a very early stage but it goes from zygote to like fetus to toddler right and so like zygote is a title of like how you are a being in a way you know how like there's toddlers there's teenagers there's adults those are classifications of like age of humans zygote is the same thing and so right off the bat uh, as soon as the sperm hits the egg and there's someone there there's a new strand of dna there you know it's not the father's dna it's not the mother's dna it has attributes from both but it's a new strand of dna Mm. meaning that it's a new person yeah you know and something that people say is either like okay when does life start then does life start at conception does life start at heartbeat does life start at first breath i read an argument today where someone was arguing for uh first breath and like oh they're not a human until they're breathing and then it's like then there, there's so many th- yeah, like things scary. that get into that you know yeah that means that person's probably up to like that person i would assume is okay with full-term abortion where there's a fully formed fetus and up until the day you give birth you can you know and that's crazy because yeah. the only yeah. difference at that point for nine months though and i know it's, we're talking about six weeks but for nine month fetus the only difference between them being like a human and not a human in the eyes of someone who's full term is location of like in yeah. the womb or outside the womb because they haven't taken their first breath, right? So that's like a six inch difference of that person getting the right to life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, but there's a bunch of obje- objections. You can watch a lot of things about it. So, uh, Mike Winger has some good videos. Ruslan has some, Ruslan, as his name, has some good videos. 
Loud Earth Crowder, um, if you like <laughs> a lot of hmm. uh, debates and stuff like that, he's got stuff on it as well. But yeah, you want to say you want to add anything and talk about its life and all that stuff? Yeah, I think, I don't know, this is more of like a, this is less scientific what I'm going to say, but I I feel like I see a lot of people who are pro-choice attacking the pro-life position by saying, okay, well, it, pro-lifers, if you want six weeks to mean that it's a baby, then I just saw this, this post today, if you want six weeks to be a baby, then uh. I'm, I want life insurance on that. And if I miscarry, then like I get to claim that. Right. And then I need to get my like support from the government. If that's what I'll get when I can, you know, when you claim a bait, like when you claim your child on your tax or whatever. But anyways, I just thought that was so interesting that it, there's just like, okay, if you want that position, like they're trying to tear down, uh, like all the things of like, okay, well, what would you do with this? What would you do with this? What would you do with this? And I yeah. am not arguing that it is complicated, but I am 100% still like you can't argue with the fact that it is life and so I don't think that all of these like special reasonings are valid enough to to be pro-choice I guess yeah. I got off topic there a little oh, bit you're fine. um yeah the idea is that because it is a human life at conception right that's scientifically and philosophically what experts say and not just pro-life experts there's pro-choice expert experts from princeton and other um esteemed establishments who say that the baby in the womb is a human life and these experts are also okay with infanticide like some of them and yes, so yeah. they're at least they're being intellectually honest but they're saying, hey, I'm okay with abortion, and yes, it's a human life, which yeah. means they're okay with murder. And, you know, the, I know I know people have had abortions, and I know a lot of people, I probably, I, I probably know people who've had abortions, you know, and we, and if, if, a lot of people, if like 25% of women have an abortion, then yeah. there's a high likelihood that all of us do. And so I'm not trying to be a jerk and be like, you're a murderer, da, 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 da. But we got to call it what it is, and we got to stand up and say, this is not right. This is sin. You know, this is yeah. not godly. You know, yeah. this is it's problematic, but we don't want to also just be bearing down and just casting shame because a lot of people who get abortions have massive regret afterwards, yeah. and massive, massive, um, yeah, like sadness and depression afterwards. And uh, something yeah. I, I read it while preparing for the show or, or heard in a podcast is that someone said, um, if it is not a human being in the womb, then there's no justification needed for why you can to abort but if it is a just uh, uh, if it is a human being in the womb then no justification is adequate yeah you know and i think that's a really good uh thing to go with where it's like look if this is not like if this scientifically can be proven that it's not a human being then why do you need to justify anything just go abort whatever you want like who cares yeah yeah but if it is a human being then like yeah you then it's not okay you know yeah cuz what it is is saying like oh, this thing that's this being inside, this person is an inconvenience to me, so I'm going to kill them. Mm -hmm. You know, 99% of, either 95 or 99% of abortions happen because of convenience. You know, only 1% are from rape and only mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, yeah, 1% are from rape and less than one point or less than 0.5% are from incest. Mm -hmm. And so the special cases that people bring up, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, and everybody also wants to argue for the, like, what if the mother is going to die? And then, and then they pin the whole pro-life argument on how do you deal with that? And it, I, that's so, um, such a small, yeah, margin of people. And yes, that is uh, incredibly painful, I would assume, like, f for a woman who is raped to go through that. And yeah, like obviously that makes me really sad, but I don't, yeah, I don't, I still don't think that they should kill the baby. And yeah. that probably sounds like cruel, but at the same time, I really do believe that um, God can work things together for the good of those who love him. And that's what scripture says. And so um, yeah, I don't think that it's like God planned for the woman to be raped, but I do believe that God uses a horrible situation to then bring like beautiful life. And yeah, I, I, there has to be 
so much emotional pain in that, I'm, I'm sure. But there are a lot of stories about women who like have like given birth to a baby that was conceived out of rape and like talk about how lovely of a child they have and how they are, they they would never change a thing that they are glad that they had that baby. Um, so I, I know that it's possible. Like I said in the beginning, like obviously we need to have a lot of grace for those situations, but I, I still don't think that that uh, justifies murder. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I saw that <laughs> somebody commented on one of my um, like abortion like posts. Uh, they said... She posts about abortion a lot. No, I don't. I, <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, sh- I should just, post more joking. about it. Um, but somebody commented, kill rapists, not babies. And I thought that was really interesting that we're like, let's yeah. punish. Let's punish the baby because you were raped. It's like, no, let's talk about rape and let's talk about how that is horrible and that needs to end. And yeah, I think death is, I think killing them is too nice. A rapist? Yeah. Castrate <laughs> them and give them solitary confinement until the day they die. <laughs> Anywho, I guess we're not really talking about rapists, but that does or, segue uh, into. I was going to say something way worse, but it's pretty dark. Never mind. Let's not go there. <laughs> it's a Christian show. Yeah. Um. So along with that rape objection, what is there anything else you wanted to say about that? But what are the other objections as well? Um. Other objections. Um. Well, it's sometimes, yeah. Well, it's like, oh, if the woman's underprivileged and can't afford to take care of it, should we do this? Should we do that? And like all these justifications, I get it, are like r- valid things that people go through. Yeah. Granted, I don't think that like... What because one percent of people who get a one percent of abortions are because of rape, that to me is not the biggest. That's not a big enough percentage where we can justify the rest of the ninety nine percent. But I would still say to that one percent, like, hey, that is a human life. Like you being the victim of a terrible, terrible sexual crime that needs to be punished, does not still doesn't give you the right to then murder an innocent. Yeah, being. you know. Yeah, I guess it is as simple as murder is never the answer. Yeah. Like, why are we answering these bad situations with more bad, like yeah. murder, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the scripture says never repay evil with evil, but repay evil with good. So if you or anyone you know was a victim of of a terrible sexual crime, and like rape, and has a kid, you don't repay that evil with, like, more evil because you're upset about it. You go to term with that baby, and maybe you can't take care of that baby, and you give it up for adoption. In mm-hmm. which case, look, I we need to be better about post-birth life like life yeah. care you know mm-hmm. a lot of something i heard in the podcast was that like and one of the objections that people raise which i think is one of the most valid things that pro-choicers have against pro-lifers is they say like oh you're not pro-life you're pro-birth and then after the baby's born you don't care about it now that's a pretty valid statement in lump sum not mm-hmm. saying that it's about like saying like we don't care about the like little, like the people in the adoption system or foster care system we care a lot like me and laura personally yeah, yeah. care a lot but i mean like i, man, I think we can care more too yeah, like i, I want to be challenged to like really be part of this like, yeah to put this belief to action yeah i have friends and family members who have been adopted and i wouldn't be opposed to adopting myself not like adopting me me adopting me that was impossible but adopting <laughs> a child in the future um but the idea being that like hey if you're going to be pro-life then set up organizations that are going to care for the mm-hmm. the born set up like maybe you should get in the foster care system maybe you should adopt i think that's all valid and i would say yes and amen especially to christians you yeah know, we in the church have to have to have to be better about post birth care you know the bible says that we're the ones that says it says pure religion in the sight of god is to care for the orphan and widows mm. you know pure religion also by the way People say it's not a relation. It's not religion. It's a relationship. Read <laughs> James. Just read yeah. the book of James. Okay, it's a Would love Christian. To do it. Yeah. Christianity is a religion. Get over it. <laughs> anyway, well, and really quick side note on that: people are saying it's not religion. It's relationship because they want people to realize that there's grace. But receiving grace doesn't mean that there isn't action that then you are pushed to do in a you know loving and spurred on way from the Holy right. Spirit. So. Anyway. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. It's a religion. But the idea <laughs> being that we are called as the body of Christ to care for the widows and orphans. And someone could flip that and be like, well, contextually, it just means like the lowest in society because that was the lowest in society back then. Okay. Well, orphans I, still I don't argue... have a great 
like a great yeah the greatest life ever uh, now also i'm sorry what is that argument that is i'm sorry that's really a strange argument to say oh well that's just like those were the weakest in the society then so like we're talking about the weakest in today's society i would say why is an orphan still not yeah, one of a, the weakest in I'm society like, orphans still yeah and i heard some statistics earlier this week that if Every, there's like whatever the ratio is it's like if every church in america chose to adopt one kid out of the foster care system the foster care system would be annihilated like just so that beautiful. is insane every church in america yeah. could adopt like five kids you know yeah and we as the body of christ can cause an impact and like how amazing of a testimony to the world of god's love would that be mm. you know we're christians we're talking about like we're adopted in sonship, or this, and, that. and then it's like some people are like, well, walk it out, adopt someone. It's like, oh shoot. And now it's I like, get it. No, some people don't have, yeah, I yeah. get it. Some people don't have money to do it. Some people want to, but maybe like they, and whatever the adoption process is really hard. I get mm-hmm. that. But we need as Christians to be in the adoption process and foster care system. We just have to. If we're going to talk about mm-hmm. pro life, we got to be about the whole life. Yeah. I kind of have a question that backtracks a little bit. But what oh, do you're you, fine. It's a what conversation. Do you th- yeah, yeah. What do you think about the objection about? Um, if oh, why does this happen to me? <laughs> it's uh, okay. Oh, if like with can we cut this? <laughs> Probably not. We don't really cut them in the middle. <laughs> okay. We just keep going. Um never mind. Pick it back All up. Right. You can go somewhere. What objection do you want to talk about? Because there's like what if they're raped, if it's incest, if the low income family um if they can't oh provide okay a good life. so like the resources ugh, that's something that i want um oh okay that like if you make abortion illegal it's we're still gonna have the same amount of abortions oh, but yeah, unsafe yeah, it's yeah. Like, you can make abortion illegal but people are still gonna have abortions and it's gonna be more dangerous so therefore you should make it legal so people can have abortions safely anyway yeah and so this is what I, I yeah it does break my heart that like there will still be women who are so desperate to relieve themselves from the pressure of having a baby that they will inflict, like, potential harm on themselves. This is very, like, tricky, but, but you know, I mean, should we then say... I don't know. Should we say, like, oh, we'll make, make murder legal people so that people can murder. do it well... Yeah. Rather, I, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's really fishy yeah. to me, but I understand that I that's get, yeah. like, that that's like, I don't think our primary battle here is legislative. I do think our primary battle here is getting people to understand like the value of the life so that they don't even want this. Yeah. I also think it's really interesting that this is even a choice that people think they can make. Yeah. Well, what's, yeah. That where, where did we go wrong? Right. In society? And, and well, to me, it's like, when I think about that, I, I mean, I'd have to look at some numbers and look at the statistics, but just off the fly when people say, well, they're still going to get an abortion, so you might as well make it legal. I think to myself, I just am not totally convinced that every, like a hundred percent of women who would get an abortion when it's legal would also get it when it's illegal. Like I'm just, I'm just not convinced it's a hundred percent correlation. And that means that we're saving lives, you know? So that's worth it to me. And I think... And then you might say, oh, it's worth it if people endanger themselves. And look, that's their choice, you know? Yeah, totally. So the problem, yeah, is not... The the legislation needs to be involved, but the greater deal is that we need to be educating, and, you know? And our education, education system is inherently anti, like, the ways of God, as you can see with critical race theory, and you can see with... <laughs> I love um, bringing that up. Yeah, critical race theory. I, I hate critical race theory. Um, we're, I'm going to do an episode about it eventually. Um... <laughs> But yeah, critical race theory, like talking about like there are all these, there's a bunch of different genders out there now. There's like, you can choose your sexuality when you're four. I read that somewhere and like all these different things that, that the education is pushing out there. Like it's just not Christian. And so mm-hmm. we don't need to be like, we, de- we need to be in the legislation of voting and making laws to uphold sanctity and human yeah. rights. But it's more about education and educating people. And so we have mm-hmm. a friend or we met someone recently who they know people who like they're like oh yeah we go out every weekend or every week we go out and right outside Planned Parenthood and we have a little booth set up and we talk to people who are about to get abortions and we share the gospel with them we talk to them about how it's a human life and like give them resources yeah and give them resources and help them they've seen like 
tons of babies saved through I think this. it was like and, 300 or something, which yeah. is so beautiful. In a few months and stuff like that. Yeah. And like people are coming to know Jesus. Like that is awesome. And like if Christians are going to stand up on Facebook and Instagram and be like, we need to be against this, then we also need to be against this in our practical life. Yeah. And I would also give a small disclaimer too with that, that I think the media probably makes christians who are pro-life look like they are hateful like you're a murderer you're going to hell like like i'm standing at an abortion clinic like chanting that you're going to hell like whoa 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 i absolutely disagree with that method of uh discouraging abortion like i we should discourage it but in in a loving way and Mm -hmm. there's a way to be loving and truthful at the same time and yeah, I think it. Yeah, that story that Ethan shared is, is an example of that. Like to have a tactic of love when you're, when you're showing. You're As showing you should do every time that you are trying to share the gospel, represent yeah. Christianity, have a tactic of love because that is the heartbeat of yeah. our religion. Another point that I kind of want to bring up and talk about is that people will say, um, or, or people will think that they have a right to have sex, and let me kind of. <laughs> let me kind of break down what i mean by this um like if i more is against sex no <laughs> if i Just as kidding. like a, if i as like a 20 year old want to be having sex with my boyfriend and i don't want any like 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 yeah whatever she doesn't <laughs> okay anyways we don't do that yeah right okay <laughs> this is like a person <laughs> we're, we're christians so that was hopefully given but <laughs> I don't know if that's awkward or like so normal that you just said that. Oh, that's funny. um, No, but just that people are like, I should be able to abort a baby if I'm not ready to have a pregnancy. And I'm like, okay, well then you should not have sex. Like, or, you know, if you're not a Christian, like have extremely safe sex. And obviously as Christians, we would say like, oh, don't have sex outside of marriage. But I know people don't agree with that standard. But especially, let me talk to a Christian, especially for a Christian, I would say, the only time that you should ever be having a baby that you don't want to be having is, uh, yeah, if you were raped. So or all married. These... Yeah, oops, baby. Oh, uh, right. But like those ones are still like wanted at some point. Like it's like, okay, like we're married. I, I guess people, I'm just some saying. Some people get upset about it. Okay, that's true. I guess I'm just saying like if you don't want to have a baby, your decision isn't, okay, well, then I should abort it. Your decision is, okay, well, then I won't have sex. And I know people will say that that's extremely conservative. (laughs) So if you would like to have sex, please use a bunch of different methods. And yeah, then I would argue if you still get pregnant after all those, all those like, um, like ways to protection, protection. Um, if you still get pregnant, I would say, okay, that is unfortunate because you try not to, but also you, you, you should carry the baby. Like, Yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? Like people's decision is yeah. whether they get in bed or not. It's not right. whether I can kill Yeah, but our culture them looks at sex as adult fun, not about procreation anymore. It's like adult play. like Right, uh, right. It's not right. It's not the right way to look yeah. at it either. I um, guess then who I'm really speaking to is a Christian of like, and even, this yeah. is your decision. Yeah. Even if you are married and you are having sex because you're married and you still conceive, as a Christian, abortion should never be an option. You don't get to do that. You're, it's murder. Yeah. End sorry. For, so yeah, I guess sorry for clarity's sake. I'm saying that I I am pro I am pro choice in a way. I believe that your choice is whether you can have sex or not. So you're not classically pro choice. You're still pro life. Correct. I'm pro life. <laughs> Someone cuts that bit. They're like Laura's pro choice. <laughs> um, no. I, I, am I making sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. I just want to title yourself as pro-choice for the sake no, of I ne- the drama I never comes would. with it. No, I never would. I'm just saying that, like, I agree women have a choice, and their choice is whether they have sex or not. That's the choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is firm, I know, but... Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we want to maybe continue this conversation in a way about, like, pointing out something that is said every single time by all these <laughs> people who are in this movement and wanting abortion is the my body, my choice. And mm. all of them are going to hate that me as a man is having <laughs> an opinion on this. It's not your body. A new, Like we said earlier, a new line of DNA is created, therefore not your body. 
So it's not your choice. Now it affects your body. Sure. It's in your womb. Sure. But it's not, you don't get to murder it because it's inconvenient. You know, mm-hmm. if a three-year-old's inconvenient, you get to murder it. No. Yeah. No, you don't. And I, three-year-olds are probably very inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, uh, the idea of my body, my choice. And I understand that there's a lot of things that people have objections to that they could say about like, oh, it's not a life because of this. It's not a life because of this. There's so many resources out there that you can find to talk about to answer those when they say like, okay, it's not a, it's not a, because like we said earlier, because of, um, they say stuff like, it's not a, it's not life because it hasn't breathed yet. Then it's talking about location. Okay. So then there's an answer for that. It's like, or it's not self-aware. Okay. So because people are not like three, like three month olds aren't self-aware. Well, yeah. And also kill everybody who is disabled that yeah, exactly. like, isn't as socially aware yeah, as your measure is. Yeah. So there's a bunch of things that you can always say to these people. So there's a bunch of resources and we don't have time to get into all of those. We're just having a conversation about this topic. Um, hopefully if you, if you're still rocking with us, congrats, uh, <laughs> you're not super offended. Uh, if we did offend you, I'm sorry, stick around. Maybe we'll work it out. I don't know. I don't think there's a lot of justifications for murder and that's what it is. It is. And I know I'm being pretty cutthroat when I say that and I still want to be gracious, but it is, it is that, you know, we want to call it what it is. And if you're uncomfortable, that's okay. Because that means that you have some semblance of like mm-hmm. a heart, <laughs> you know? And I think if, if the, the idea behind receiving that it is, uh, that it is life in the womb, then would lead you to fight for life and would lead you to protect life. And so we're not saying like, let me like convince you that this is life so that you can feel ashamed. It's let's convince you that this is life so that you will protect life and yeah. promote life. Yeah. Um, if you're watching a video and that just cut out, that's cause my battery sucks and I definitely had it plugged in for a while and I guess it just didn't work. Uh, but we're still rocking. Um, Hopefully you are too. But yeah, let's talk about this idea of my body, my choice. Laura, you go first since you're the female and I don't want to be called a hypocrite. Or not a hypocrite, a <laughs> uh, misogynist. Yeah. Well, you kind of said everything that I would say as well, that it's not your body. Um, it's also, yeah, it's it's sad to me. It, it, it really twists, like, it twists pro-lifers to looking like we hate personal freedom, which is really funny and ironic because of what conservatives are fighting for now of like I, I, this is kind of your point that you're going to bring oh, up you're Ethan, but just that a conservative person who is pro-life oftentimes also is anti-vaccine um and like anti-mask yeah and with the vaccine like i would say that's my body and so <laughs> it's my choice and a pro-choicer would say you need to do this for the good of everybody. Most often time, because most times the people who are pro-choice are often the left and the people oh, who say, sorry. Yeah. and the people who say, you need to get the vaccine and wear a mask for the protection of those around you is oftentimes the people on the left. Yeah. And I would say, um, it's my body. And so <laughs> like I get to decide what goes in it. And yes, you could say, oh, well, like a baby is within me. Like I get to decide what goes within me, but we're not talking about like, a vaccine or like we're talking about another person's life i think it gets really kind of twisted i don't yeah. know do you want to keep further yeah that point? i think it's just kind of funny in my mind where the people who are like it's my body my choice are all about their body their choice and then someone on the other political side would be like okay sure my body my choice i don't want to get a vaccine or wear a mask and then they're saying no but you have to because you have to protect those around you yeah and, and we're then, saying protect yeah. the baby within yeah, you and, we're, and then we're like okay well then you're not allowed to get an abortion because we're trying to protect the people the person was with, with, within you and they're like it's my body my choice and so it's kind of like funny because both political pe- sides want to claim my body my choice with different things um and both and at least the right kind of uses this idea against the left and where they're saying like They'll be like, no, you always say my body, my choice, and now it's the vaccine. I don't want it. I don't want it. And they're like, see, actually, I haven't heard people use that. Do you use that? I've seen it a couple times. On I Facebook. love that. Usually from uh, conservative moms on Facebook who are kind of <laughs> out there. Yeah. But yeah, so it's just kind of funny to me because there's, I don't want to be too harsh, but a little bit of hypocrisy from the left, and maybe even a case of hypocrisy from the right when it comes to this, because the left will be like, it's my body, my choice. I'm gonna put whatever. I'm gonna get an abortion. But then they're like trying to force everyone to get a get a vaccine and acting like we're, we we mm-hmm. hate people and don't care if they yeah. die if we don't get this vaccine when they are literally 
ripping baby's limb from limb. Mm. Yeah, and wasn't the mask from the beginning like a self-protective measure? Uh, well, the, the idea was that it would, if you coughed, it would contain it, so you weren't spreading it. But vaccines don't protect, like, they don't stop. Vaccines are to protect the person, not to protect everyone else around you. You know, like, masks are to yeah, protect those around that's you. that's what doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, masks stop, like, you spreading it to me, but a vaccine stops you, if you were to spread it to me, stops, it ideally should stop me from being able to get it. But yes. the COVID vaccine... We're going to get all political today. The COVID vaccine doesn't even stop you from giving getting COVID or being able to, so what to transmit it? COVID. Sorry. Just it's gonna... it's insane. Yeah. It's, we could do a whole topic mm-hmm. on that anyways. But. The issue of people getting the getting COVID and also getting uh, people of getting COVID and getting the Delta variant, like, is an issue of the vaccine. I'm sorry. I don't think it's an issue of I need to get the vaccine and that's going to solve it it clearly isn't solving it. And so why is it yeah. such a big deal that I'm supposed to get my vaccine? Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to all politically <laughs> gonna making somebody upset somewhere. Yeah. Uh, if you get the vaccine, I don't care. If I don't, if you yeah. don't get the vaccine, I don't care. Yeah. You can decide for yourself. I That's will fine. say, man, Derry would be so upset if he was here. <laughs> He'd be like, no, only because uh, Derry's a little bit more left leaning than we are, and so yeah. he's probably gonna. If he listens, he's gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> what did you do with my?" Podcast? But no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, we like everybody on every political spectrum. Yeah. Um, we- and yeah, and we don't. And like, if you've had an abortion, you're still listening. We don't want you to be offended or at, feel like we're like calling you a murderer. Maybe you did have an abortion, but maybe you've repented of it and that has forgiven by Jesus. And we want to not reject you or neglect you or ostracize you, but to say, hey, you're forgiven, but Mm -hmm. we have to call it what it is. You know, if someone's an alcoholic and they repent, you don't say you don't try to downplay. You know, we don't we don't downplay sin when we come to Christ. What we do is we show the power of forgiveness Mm. and when you don't downplay the sin and you call it what it is and you still say but i'm forgiven and you live free in that forgiveness it shows the magnitude and the and the power of the forgiveness of jesus christ Mm. you know if you're listening to this and you and you aren't a christian you've had an abortion there is forgiveness for all your sins it's not just the abortion that that's messed up you're a sinner if you're not a christian and you need to repent you know, and sin is is going to separate from you from God. It is separating you from God. The Bible talks about sin as like this slave master that like holds you victim and you're a slave to it and you can't do anything but sin. And Jesus is the one who brings freedom. So we want to encourage you guys to get free and through Jesus and become a Christian and repent of your sins and find what life is all about, which is serving him. And it's a good time. Wow. Amen. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's um, great. Anything you want to say in closing? Anything yeah, you want to say, say... As, a, as, a, as a woman on this topic, do you want to like encourage your fellow women? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I support what you said, and I respect that a man can have a voice in this discussion. I know that's pretty unpopular as well, but um, yeah, a man has responsibility as well. So, you know, a lot of women are upset because men often they you know they offer their sperm but then they're not around for any of it and so yeah that is a big bummer um but yeah anyways I just think that men are allowed to be in the discussion and because that's unpopular I want to say it (laughs) because I believe that um yeah and then I would say practically people who are pro-life and like us and you know I believe like a Christian should be Um, we need to, I think also be taking like action and also I do think being gracious and like continually growing in like humility and understanding of people's stories and their experience. Um, but not letting that be something that like shy, like keeps us from the truth. Yeah. So just Mm -hmm. like practically, I think that, that if you're pro-life and you are like in the, you are like marriage seat like you're getting married or you're I mean if you're younger as well but like people who are starting families like really consider adopting and consider like putting your money where your mouth is and um and in general I would say like prayer as well because maybe you are extremely poor and you could not afford adopting a child or you are 13 or whatever it is 
um, consider like just praying. Like that is actually a practical step that we can do. Praying for like these mothers, praying for like legislation and I don't know, everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, if you found this valuable, give us a like and a follow or a subscribe or something. We're almost 200 subscribers, which is really fun trying to get there. And yeah, if you found it valuable, send it to a friend, send it to your mom. Uh, we can You can follow us on all the social medias. We got a Patreon if you want to support us. But yeah, uh, we love you guys. We're here and want to contribute to your spiritual growth. And we love you. Have a great week. Bye, guys. <laughs>